This is Twit. There's no doubt that Intel still owns the vast majority of the mobile and the desktop market, but of course, AMD has been making gains, which has led to all sorts of insanity, all sorts of efforts, I will call it, since apparently I'm in a feisty, uh, ticking people off mood today, as Sebastian will uh, report. Um, but you just wrote up an article on uh, Intel's 10 nanometer Adler Lake S CPUs, uh, up to 16 big dot little cores, and hopefully PCI Express 4.0. Um, what's going on with this? This this will actually be the first 10 nanometer desktop CPU from Intel, uh, a new socket, because really, if Intel can learn anything from AMD, it's that they should continue changing sockets as often as possible. Um, and now I am getting kind of snarky. Uh, but uh, uh, Video Cards uh, was talking about uh, possible big dot little uh, configurations for Adler Lake, excuse me, Alder Lake S processors, and as many as 16 cores. Um, is this rumor? Is this verified? Is this madness? How does it this pass seems, or not pass the sniff test? It seems a little fantastic. It's rumor, first mm -hmm. of all. They've not confirmed any of this, and I don't have any more concrete sources than video cards. This originally came from some Chinese forums where there, were, uh, there was a, apparently or reportedly a leaked slide that showed this Alder Lake S product with its unusual configuration. Now, there's, there's also another 10 nanometer product, Comet Lake S, and there's been speculation that they were going to be moving to an LGA 1200 socket Currently, you know, right. the 11 5X stuff is what we have for desktop. And so that was going to be a bit of a change. This is LGA 1700, which seems, this the whole thing seems kind of fantastic. But what's really right. fascinating about it is the slide shows three different configurations. And it tops out at an 8 plus 8 plus 1 configuration. Now, this is apparently big little. So 8 plus 8 would be 8 big cores eight low power cores and then the plus one is graphics so in this case uh mm -hmm. intel's gt1 which is their low lower tier graphics they have gt1 gt2 and gt3 so lower number of execution units kind of your basic intel hd graphics but eight plus eight is it's weird now big little for those right. who don't know it's an arm thing arm is the mobile processor uh basically the template of everything that we use and for for this configuration, it would basically be eight, I imagine, eight full power x86 Intel cores, whatever the Skylake -like derivative is, or obviously this is a newer generation. This is 10 nanometer architecture, so it would not be Skylake -like derivative, like Comet Lake derivative. I'm not sure exactly what the architecture of Alder Lake is. But these eight smaller cores, I'm not sure what that would be. If this is some uh, more of like an Atom style processor, something very low power. Right. And meant for those kind of background tasks and processes that don't need your big cores. But it's it's kind of fascinating to look at this, especially considering the TDPs. At first, I was thinking, oh, this is going to be a mobile part. Kind of makes sense. Like we've heard rumors. We talked about this, I think, last week about Apple potentially going to, to an ARM-based solution, one of their in-house processor designs for Macs in the future. Well, it seems to make sense that Intel might pursue the same thing, especially if they want to keep Apple a client. If Apple wants to move in a mobile direction and they have a mobile product, that kind of makes sense. Uh, but this is something that would be completely unique within the PC industry if there's an x86-based big little design like this. Do you have any thoughts about this, Patrick? Does this sound uh, rational at all to you? You know, it's uh, the word "peculiar" comes to mind for no particularly uh, for no particularly interesting reason. Um, you know, one the first thing I thought was the reaction I have every time I see uh, PCI Express 4.0, especially when Ryzen launched with it, was is that yay! And then I remember that nobody can saturate like the 32 gigabits or gigabytes per second on the gigabytes per gigabits. Um, the uh, <sighs> Nobody can saturate like PCI 3.0 uh, uh, in terms of its 32 gigabytes per second um, yeah, yeah. when you're looking at uh, uh, X16. Uh, but uh, so 
you know, the theoretical 64 gigabytes per second isn't particularly useful. And then they were only hitting 70% of that. And then some manufacturers were actually capping it uh, to behave like PCI Express 3.0. Um, so, you know, that was my my first reaction was being like, eh. Um, my second reaction was actually start thinking about this. And, you know, the as, as you kind of noted, it's the, the TDPs kind of make you blink a little bit. Um, 125 watt, 150 watt, that's like, you know, 9200 series processor <laughs> yeah you know maybe not they're not idling at 150 watts but um they start sounding like you know big power sucking parts again and i just i kind of got stuck there um you know um you know i get why arm did this on uh you know processors for phones uh i just yeah. wonder I, I, I don't know i guess the the to you know think less and speak more it seems like well it once again seems like they're looking at battery life being the primary thing they have to move forward on the mobile platform which makes sense given that they basically doubled gpu performance but did nothing particularly useful in terms of cpu performance in the last generation processor and now it looks like right. the next generation processor or the generation next processor may deliver increased battery life along with increased gpu performance but still not doing much in terms of overall uh you know power user performance on laptops which is somebody who spends a lot of time dealing with video on laptops is really frustrating but in terms of the vast majority of the people who consume uh intel laptops is probably exactly what they're looking for um you, you know, know i just thought of something uh, what if this slide, which obviously is, I would assume, has been recreated, or it does not. Right. There's just something about it. It looks a little bit fabricated. It might have been just created because this is from a like a translated uh, leak. But the right. the thing that strikes me about this is because this seems like such a mobile focused part. If it's a real part, what if there's just a missing decimal right. point here? What if this is 8.0 watts, like eight watts? And then 12.5 configurable up to 15. That makes a lot more sense for this. Yeah. That becomes kind of, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Like 16 cores, low power seems crazy. But if you think, well, it's, right. it's eight low, cow, low power cores and then eight of what essentially are mobile cores. And you remember, you know, 2014 is when I think it was Maryfield, Intel's mobile platform for phones uh, was mm -hmm. out. So that was the last iteration of that. And they've gotten out of that market, but they still they have this technology. Right. And that was based on 22 nanometer architecture. So if they've scaled this down to 10 nanometer, that could be, I mean, that was like multi, like quad or I think it was quad core parts in mobile, possibly up to eight cores. I don't remember the configurations yeah. that were available, but those were ultra low TDP mobile parts. Scale those up to a laptop and pair them up with some traditional laptop cores and it would be compelling and like you're talking about battery life that's where they they need right. to be they need higher core counts especially to compete with amd who now has all of a sudden with the ryzen 4000 mobile parts uh right. very high mobile core counts like 8 and 16 thread uh parts for laptop so i i'd that like starts to see, getting kind of interesting yeah and who knows if this is simply a matter of uh, loss in translation and this, these TDPs were completely out of whack, then this starts to look like a mobile part. And, but for desktop, it just doesn't make any sense. I don't see why they wouldn't pursue something to compete with like the 3900 and 3950 X for desktop. Cause we're still, you can spend $500 right now on an Intel CPU and it's still an eight core CPU, the 9900 K right. and KS are eight core 16 thread parts. And for around the same price, or even a little bit less, you can buy a 16 core 32 thread part from AMD. So you'd think when the desktop parts hit, they'd be focusing maybe a little bit more on high core count to to compete. But, you know, like you said, that their, their niche is basically mobile. Right. Uh, enthusiast desktop right now is all AMD. 
not all, but it's it's all about AMD. The majority of the coverage, enthusiasm, and it seems sure. purchasing is being made around the Ryzen 3000 series. So they dominate laptops, though. Still, even with older and architectures, laptops is where the majority laptops. of system sales are. 